Hey Aplea, Hydeism is a conversation that has recently come back to the surface, especially with the spread of the viral video at Bagel Boss, where Chris Morgan kind of flipped out and got super upset at a woman behind the counter because he thought she was making fun of his height. So today, as a tall person, I'm 6'1", I want to talk about my perspective on Hydeism, on people who are shorter getting upset because of their height and feeling disadvantaged in this world, and what we can do, what everyone else in this world can do to handle these type of situations and how to approach these type of people. For those of you that are new here, my name is Josh, and every single week I make videos sharing tips, ideas, and stories teaching you how to be your best self. So if you want to learn and grow, hit the subscribe button and make sure to click on the notification bell. Now just a bit of backstory here. This isn't the first time that Chris Morgan has got upset at someone behind the counter and flipped out at them because of height-related issues. This has happened before. He has a video over on his YouTube channel. I come in here to get a coffee and to get a donut, you don't say hi, how you doing? The first thing out of your mouth is what's my height? I do wanna dive into the Bagel Boss video, kind of break it down, watch it with you guys, and kind of see where I think the issues actually lie. All right, so I got the video loaded up here. Let's watch it together and kind of do a walkthrough play-by-play. You're great women, why is that okay? Why is it okay for women to say, oh, you're five feet on dating sites? You should be dead, that's okay? Okay, let's pause it right there. So there's two pieces to that that I kind of want to dive deeper into. The first one being when the woman asks, why is it okay to degrade women? Now, Chris kind of just ignores and blocks out this question and dives deeper into, well, I'm doing this action because this is happening to me. And this is a defensive mechanism that a lot of people use. When they get called out for something that they do, they tend to justify it for themselves. They tell themselves, well, I'm only doing that because this thing is happening to me. It's possible that removed from this this situation, if you were to just ask Chris on any normal given day, hey, is it okay to degrade women? He'd probably say no. But given that he's already upset, he's already angry, the video starts with him already being angry at what happened, yeah, he's gonna justify any reasoning he has. No matter what anyone says he's doing or accuses him of, he's just gonna deflect it and kind of focus on his own hurt. Now, if it is true and people are making death threats towards him, that is not okay. I would think though it's more than likely that the type of threats he's receiving are along the lines of, you're so short, your genes are never gonna pass on, or you're so short, no one's ever gonna wanna be with you and you're gonna die alone. Those type of comments which really dive deep into his character, which attack him as a person, and the person usually saying those type of things isn't really aware of how they're affecting someone else. So if he is receiving those type of comments, I can understand where he's coming from, but like I said, his reaction doesn't justify the answer to the initial question. Is it okay to harass and attack women just because women give you death threats or women make fun of your height? Who said that to you here? Nobody. The women in general have said it on dating sites. That's, that's you think it. I'm making that up? Dude. Everywhere I go, I get the same fucking smirk with mm -hmm. the biting lip. Okay, let's pause it there. Let's kind of break that down a little bit. So in this situation, the woman he's talking to asks him who's making these claims, who's saying these things, and he kind of diverts it and says women in general. This is a big point I think we need to really think deeper about. A lot of times when we're experiencing something in person, it can kind of trigger and bring back past hurt. And for Chris, I think that's a shining example of that with his response. When he's asked, you know, hey, who said this? He says women in general. This idea that he's experienced it so many years and for so long kind of comes out in this moment. It comes out in the moment where he just feels like the person behind the counter is doing this specific thing that's triggering that type of response from him. And the main issue with that is that it doesn't give an opportunity for a person to handle the problem that they're experiencing in the moment. By reflecting on past trauma and bringing in all these other issues, you make it so convoluted and so kind of grand that there's no way you can tackle the challenge that's in front of you. Instead, you just feel so overwhelmed by the hurt that no, it's impossible to handle. This is something I've come across a lot in having conversations with people that are short or from the incel community or from men going their own way. A lot of times you ask them simple, straightforward questions. What's the specific situation you encountered and how did it make you feel? But they tend to bring in lots of random statistics and things going on and, and headlines and all these other things. They kind of fill the whole conversation with a laundry list of things that aren't specifically relevant to what they're experiencing because it makes it easier for them to justify their feelings. And I know what this is like. If you're a guy that's short, it could be easy to say, well, look, women love tall guys and they're always choosing tall guys. And women have never chose me just because women don't like me for my height. And maybe you find something else about yourself that you think women don't like you for. And you start pulling out all these reasons. You start beating yourself down to the point when you feel like you're insignificant. But 
Spoiler alert, guys, that's not true. Now, one of the important things that he mentioned is the fact that the woman kind of covered her face and kind of smirked, kind of looked at other people and things like that. When you're dealing with your own insecurities, you tend to be hyper aware of what other people are doing. You tend to focus on the little body cues and social dynamics of it all simply because you're nervous and worried that people won't accept you for who you are. So you're constantly trying to make sure that, hey, are they giving off any signals at all that can mean that I'm just less of a person? And other people in the store said, no, the woman was just smiling. He was kind of reading too much into it. But I do want to be a little bit realistic here. I've seen this too. I see people do this all the time. Whether it's a homeless person on the street and people kind of just look at each other like, well, that guy's weird. Or a short person or a person that just is dressed kind of funky or is just doing something that's out of the ordinary. People tend to look to other people for kind of this uh, communication, this kind of sense of connection where they say, hey, look, you and me are both normal in this situation with this weird person, let's look at each other, let's pass looks to each other just so that we can kind of confirm, hey, I'm not alone in this experience. Whether or not that happened in this situation, I can't really confirm, but I do know these type of situations do happen. I'm somewhat of a tall guy, like I said, I'm 6'1", so I've seen short people kind of get looked at weird. I've seen people kind of smirk and laugh at them and kind of make eye contact with other people like, look at this weirdo. But that's a major issue. I think a lot of people have to kind of realize that they're doing. Look, there's nothing wrong with people trying to connect over things that they feel uncomfortable or weirded out about. It's a normal part of human life. The problem and the challenge here really lies in how Chris handles these situations. Being on the receiving end, knowing that other people are looking at you in a mocking type of way, how do you respond in a way that you can feel more secure with yourself? Now, another key piece to this video is when someone else steps in and tells him to just shut up. A lot of times when you're dealing with insecurity and hurt and you're angry, when someone comes in and tells you and commands you to do something, yeah, you're not really going to respond to that in kindness. You're not really aware at that point. I think it's safe to say at this point in the video, he is just totally in his zone. He's in his world where he's upset and he's hurt and nothing anyone else can say to kind of try to facilitate the conversation towards him calming down is really going to happen. I think there's a different approach that needs to be had. What people unintentionally do in these situations is actually escalate the problems. By telling someone to shut up and to stop talking, you're not going to get them to stop. Instead, what you actually need to do is interrupt the pattern of what's happening. A pattern interrupt would work something like this. Imagine this person is going off about their height and yelling at people and fighting. Imagine if someone just started singing a song in the middle of it all. And and everyone else just started singing along too. Imagine if people broke out into sweet Caroline in the middle of the store. What do you think would happen? Because that's something so incredibly random, you're breaking up the pattern. In his mind, he's gonna think, what the heck is going on? And he's gonna start to forget about the fact that he's angry about the height and start wondering, why are these people singing? And trust me, that would have been a different kind of viral video. Our ego tends to take over when we try to control the situation by telling someone what to do. And he even mentions control to an extent here. He says, you're not God or my boss or my father, which it seems to me like Chris is a person that responds very well to authority that he respects. And the fact that you're an outside person telling him what to do, you're not an authority he respects. And the reason why Chris tells the guy hey let's step outside is because that anger has nowhere to go it's been bottled up because his actual concerns haven't been addressed the fact that he feels this person smirked in this kind of way and everyone dismissed him for it yeah he's gonna turn to fighting because he needs to let that aggression out somehow whether it's him throwing something on the ground whether it's him storming out of the place either way he's gonna find an outlet for it and it's not gonna be a healthy one shut your mouth you're not God or my father or my boss Dude, you want to step outside? Hey. You want to step outside? Huh? I'm not the guy's face, Ow. Ow. And then someone else tries to control him, up, tell him what to do. Of course, he's angry and he Tackle him. Oh my god. He's gonna end in a fight. I just want to I recorded the whole thing. Okay. The guy tells him, you don't talk to people like that and we need to break this down. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Another person steps in and tries to be the authority in this situation, telling him what to do. Now he's already backed into a corner. He knows that he has nowhere to go. Everyone is against him and all he can do is kind of lash out. It's either he just storms out of the place or he gets into a fight with someone. Like he only sees two options for himself here because his insecurities are driving his thought process, not actual reason here. 
And even though I think he's 100% wrong in how he handled his anger, he turned it towards aggression and rage, imagine how the situation would have played out if someone walked up to him, put their hand on his shoulder and said, dude, I get where you're coming from, man. It's not easy. Listen, don't worry about these people here. You're a little upset, man. Let's go outside. Let's go cool off. Imagine if someone approached him like a person and tried to kind of de-escalate the situation by bringing him out of it. Sometimes that actually works because when the person who's angry and upset and hurt feels like there's someone that connects with them, that understands their struggle and their hurt, they're way more willing to be trusting of that person. So imagine if someone had just been a person that he can kind of open up to and share that, talk about it, kind of say his angry piece. Even though he was 100% wrong, even though the way he treated the other people were wrong, even though his perceptions of the situation may have been wrong, imagine if someone talked to him like he was just another person. If they pulled him out of the store, if he got his bagels and left without, as the video kind of plays on, which we, we're not gonna kind of go over it here, but he gets upset, takes the bagels, leaves, walks out of the store. Imagine if someone had walked out with him de-escalated the situation. How do you think things would have played out differently? In my mind, there's a larger discussion about short guys and dating that needs to happen here. In fact, I've dived more into it and talked more about short guys and dating in this video over here, but ultimately we have to remember this. Every single one of us wants to be loved for who we are. We want to feel like other people accept us for what we bring to the table. And when people mock us for being short, when people make fun of our height or any of our characteristics, it can make us feel insecure. The real challenge comes in with how we deal with those insecurities. Do we lash out and be aggressive towards other people? Or do we recognize that the people making fun of us for what we're dealing with are suffering in their own way because they don't have the skills to be compassionate enough to communicate with us? Chris is just one example of a guy who feels slighted by everyone else simply because it's something that they have no control over, his height. For other people, it's the fact that they can't grow facial hair or the fact that their face might not look as good as they want it to. Either way, guys, if you feel down about yourself, if you feel like no one loves you for who you are, check out this video over here because I think it'll be super helpful for you in taking that journey forward into accepting yourself. On that note, guys, I'll catch you next time. As always, love and peace.